This was a study that I wanted to show you all. Long-term effect device guided slow breathing on blood pressure regulation and chronic inflammation patients with essential hypertension using a, a wearable device. So basically what they did in this study is that these patients had breathing exercises that was guided by a cell phone app. So the cell phone app tells them, okay, breathe. Now don't breathe. Now expire. Now take a deep breath in. So it, made, it guided them through a breathing pattern, okay? Now why was I interested in this? Because I told you that all he's doing when he's doing this is he's hacking the vagus nerve. That's all he did, right? Right? And look at the results. There was a significant decrease in blood pressure after one month of exercise. How did the blood pressure come down? Because bringing down the blood pressure is the job of the parasympathetic nervous system, the vagus nerve. And a significantly continuous decrease in TNF alpha was also, what does that mean? A significantly continuous decrease, it kept going down. TNF, what is TNF? Tumor necrosis factor alpha. So that's an inflammatory marker. So when I'm doing your advanced lipid panels starting now, I've been doing them, it's the Cleveland Heart Lab stuff that I'm looking at. I'm looking at interleukin-6, I'm looking at tumor necrosis factor. Unfortunately, some of the insurances don't want to pay for it. But this tells me that if your tumor necrosis factor level is high, you have a lot of inflammation in your body. And didn't the study just show me that I can decrease it just by breathing? How cheap is that? So who's going to pay for the study in the future? Nobody. Because you don't get paid by telling somebody to take a nice deep breath in but a long breath out. So there you go. The barrel reflex indices were also significantly increased. Heart rate variability did not show differences at this time. That's because there were other factors also still in the patient. And the positive correlations between sympathetic index and, and this is, there you go. So the sympathetic all went down. Tumor necrosis factor levels also went down. Slow breathing exercises have a beneficial effect on blood pressure and chronic inflammation. You become uninflamed when your vagus nerve is stimulated and hacked by you by breathing. So just pay attention to your breathing. You see, the autonomic nervous system is autonomic. It works on its own. But you can also control it. You can override it. And the best way to override it is your breathing. See, if you don't pay attention to your breathing, you're still breathing, right? It's automatic. But I can hold my breath. I can breathe out hard. So I can also override it. So I'm saying to you, do it. Do it. Whatever it takes, do it. I don't care what form, I don't care which yoga class you go to, or whether you just do it at home, or whether you do Tai Chi, or whether you do postures, or whether you use a machine to guide you, or, you, or whatever you want. Just, but just do it. This one is a device versus non-device guided slow breathing to reduce blood pressure. This is another systematic review. Uh, modest blood pressure reductions. Low-level vagus nerve stimulation suppresses post-op atrial fib and inflammation. I love this study. Why? So in patients who have surgery, open-heart surgery, they often go into atrial fibrillation. At least 20% of the patients go into atrial fib. Now, my interest in atrial fib is that why, why do they go into atrial fibrillation post-op? And we say, oh, it's the irritation of the pericardium, and there's blood around the pericardial space, and blah, blah, blah. But I'm saying... There's something more fundamental at the biochemical level. There's something else. And it's an imbalance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic system in these patients that throws them into atrial fibrillation. So surgery is sympathetic. Of course, surgery is very stressful. Your adrenaline levels are high. Your intramyocardial catecholamine levels will be really, really high. So if a patient goes into surgery with high vagal tones, he's healthy, he's been doing all this stuff, he's going, likely going to have less atrial fibrillation post-op. Because he's, so here, what they did is that they did low-level vagus nerve stimulation. So what they did is, after the surgery was done, the surgeon implanted a little device right on, on the vagus nerve and, and gave it a little energy, the vagus nerve, post-op. And what happened to the incidence of atrial fibrillation? Let's look, conclusion, this is it. Low-level vagus nerve stimulation, LLVNS, suppresses post-operative atrial fibrillation and attenuates inflammation also. Whoa, inflammation also. Now you got my attention because I'm all about inflammation because what causes coronary artery disease? 
Inflammation. What causes chronic diseases in humans? Inflammation. What is that we all suffering from today in this world? Is inflammation, right? There you go. Yeah. So there you go. That's what I mean to. So let's see in this group what happened. Okay. So we saw that serum tumor necrosis factor. There he shows up again. Interleukin six, significantly lower in the group that had vagal nerve stimulation. So how is that possible? Well, the vagus nerve I told you is a two-way traffic. It sends the signal from here to the brain. The vagus nerve got stimulated. It says, ah, that's good. Everything is hunky-dory. The signal it got back. The king is sitting in his chair. And his scout went out and checked it out and came back. And who's the scout? The vagus nerve is coming back, right? Telling it everything is hunky-dory. How did it know that? Because the vagus nerve was being stimulated, right? By the, the electricity was coming. It's good, good. Vagus nerve is stimulated. It's great. So the king said, oh, that's all right, that's great. Bring back the horses and bring back the men. Stop the inflammation. If that signal was not coming, you'd say, oh my God, there's no vagus activity. Oh, jeez, this is terrible. Terrible news. Inflammation will be ongoing, ongoing inflammation. So it turns off the inflammation. Next, these are the exercises. I think I already told you some of these. Oh, by the way, this balloon blowing, I didn't tell you about the balloon blowing. So when you blow a balloon, you're raising the intrathoracic pressure. Hmm? That stimulates your vagus nerve. And I'll show you some slides later on to show you how people take advantage of that and will sell you a little machine. Well, wait a second. Let's get a balloon. Do it yourself. <laughs> play with the balloon. Do something useful. Play with it. Then laugh. <laughs> now you'll get a lot of vagus nerve activity. So ice water, ice back to the neck, Valsalva, 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 Valsalva. So Valsalva is when you, when you, 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 you take a breath in, you breathe in, and then you pretend like you're going to breathe out, but you don't. You close your glottis and you strain. And when you strain, what's happening is you're increasing the abdominal pressure. And the vagus nerve that supplies all the intestines gets squeezed. And you get an intense increase in your vagal nerve. That's Valsalva. We do that in patients who have SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, when they go into that runaway rhythm, we say, okay, now sit down and push, and they do that, and boom, the SVT breaks because you increase the parasympathetic. You can do that too. Not because you're getting SVT, but just do it for fun. So you're at home, feeling a little stressed out, you don't have a balloon, then just do a couple of Valsalvas, See, a couple of those rounds, it's fine. People say, what are you doing? You're having a bowel movement? No, I'm not. <laughs> it's okay. Do it. Yoga postures, meditation, humming, gargling. I mentioned all these cold water shots. Now, this hit I put at the bottom, that's an intense activity. I really like this. I think this is because that's what I do. I, look, I don't have time to go to the gym for an hour. I, I don't know how many people have time to go to the gym or get on that treadmill and do all this. I, I, I don't have time for it. So I do short bursts of activity real fast. It takes me literally minutes. But as soon as I'm done with that rapid activity, then I just totally rest. And no one's even around. I just do it on my own. It only takes me a few minutes every day. Every day. It just takes me a few minutes to do it. That's it. And that, that's, that's how I like to do it. Intense activity with intense rest. Intense rest. See, nobody ever told you that. They just told you to do intense activity, didn't they? Why didn't they tell you to do intense rest right after the intense activity? That's what I like to see. I want to see that you facilitate the yin and the yang. Do intense, fast activity with maximum ability that you can. And then just lie down and rest. So one of the ones that I do, which I like, is the hands on the knees, you know, when you jump up real fast and just do that just for, just for about a minute or so. And then you're really huffing and puffing. Your heart rate probably goes to about 150 and then just lie down. Lie down. And you'll find that you'll be able to hack your system much faster and better. So if you really liked and enjoyed this video, then check out this clip because I think you'll find it very helpful. And of course, if you want to see the full video, this is where you'd go. Now, also, don't forget to check out my website because there's lots of educational materials and resources there. You'll also find how to contact me or have a consultation with me. So please do check out my website.
Thank you.